Story 1. Who am I? Criminal or a sibling? The two siblings Laurie and Gloria were about to give their university entrance exam. Gloria has already started preparing, and she always asks her elder brother Laurie to join, as they were writing the same exam. Laurie was smart, however, he refuses to study. He always says, I am going to try my luck to get into the university. The day of the examination has arrived. Both of them went to attend the exam. Larry came out early, as the question paper has only multiple choice questions, he ticked them all out randomly. On the other hand, Gloria answered most of the questions based on what she had prepared, and for the rest of the answers, she did the same as Larry. The results were supposed to declare, after one month. For Gloria, Larry was not just a brother, but also her guardian and the most valuable person in her life. Laurie always tries his best to make Gloria happy. Both the siblings love and care for each other. When they were in middle school, their parents died. So, they started living with their uncle. He makes them work hard all the time. They do his household chores and also help him with his small business. Even their other relatives look for them when they have things to be done. When Laurie and Gloria became 18 and 16, their uncle kicked them out of his house. Then they started living with their aunt, Lisa. She was a divorcee, and her financial condition wasn't good. So, both the siblings started tuition classes for kids in their neighborhood. Aunt Lisa loved both of them, but she loves Gloria more. The day before the result of the entrance exam, Gloria prayed to God, Oh my Lord! Please pass pass both of us in the exam. If you want to pass only one of us, please let my brother be that one. Even if I get failed, I won't complain you. Now it's the result day. As soon as he woke up in the morning, Laurie checked the result and got upset. When Gloria and Aunt Lisa asked him the reason for being upset, he showed them the result. Gloria was startled to see that she passed and his brother failed the exam. Gloria doesn't know what to do to comfort him. She didn't say anything at all. Aunt Lisa said, it's okay. There's nothing to get upset about. It was just an exam. Gloria got admission to the university with a full scholarship. She has joined the university for a professional course. Aunt Lisa and Gloria told Laurie to join some private college, but he refused and said, I will wait and write the entrance exam next year. As their financial condition wasn't good, Gloria didn't have money for transport. So, she used to walk two kilometers every day. One kilometer for going to college and one for coming back home. Her classmates used to mock her because she was brown. She keeps everything to herself and never complains about anything. Time flies, and the year have almost passed. Both the aunt and Gloria ask Larry to prepare for the exam. However, his answer was the same as before, instead of studying, I will try my luck. He attempted the exam, and he failed again. This time, aunt got furious and scolded him for repeating the same mistake. He got hurt inside and pretend to be okay. Conversely, Gloria has passed her first year exam and promoted to second year. Laurie lost his interest in studies and gave up on his education. He started doing some odd jobs. Laurie's behavior started changing. He has cut ties with all their relatives and become aggressive. Gloria was terrified by his behavior. Three years later, Gloria got graduated. There was the graduation ceremony at her university. It was a special day for her so, she wanted her brother brother and Aunt Lisa to attend it. Aunt Lisa got ready for it, but Laurie refused it by saying I am not interested in such stupid stuff. She got her graduation certificate and luckily, she also passed the post-graduation entrance exam. To celebrate this, her cousins invited her to their place. She was celebrating the in-house party, but on the other side, at home Laurie got insane and argued with Aunt Lisa, asking where did Gloria go. He messed up the furniture and other things at home. He opened the Gloria's cupboard, 
there was a file in which there was the original certificate of her graduation. He tore it the very moment he saw it. Aunt Lisa was trying to stop him, but what can an old lady do? Gloria came home the next day and was looking forward to her post-graduation admission. She has to submit her original graduation certificate to the university within two days. When she asked Aunt Lisa about the certificate, she told her everything in the absence of Laurie. Gloria couldn't believe it. For her, Laurie was a perfect brother. She didn't ask anything to Laurie and tried to find a solution to it. She asked different officials, lecturers, and friends at her university. One of the university officials told her a way that was quite hectic. She followed that procedure and got a transcript of her degree. Since that day, Laurie started avoiding Gloria and didn't talk to her. Even if she approaches him, he never talks to her. A few days later, Laurie asked Aunt Lisa to lend him money for the business. As she wasn't wealthy, the only asset she had was a small house. So, she sold it and gave 30% of the money to Laurie. Within a few days, Laurie lost the money in the stock market. When Aunt Lisa found out that he had lost the money, she said, You asked me for the money for the business. Then why did you invest it in stocks? You don't have any experience in it, still you invested lavishly? Laurie started arguing with Aunt Lisa, Lisa and said, You only care about your money, not me. Fine. I will never take a penny from you again. I'll never even spit on your money. A few days later, when Laurie was fixing the light bulb of kitchen, Gloria was studying in her room. He came to Gloria and said, You are worthless. You don't do any work and just study. You are the most selfish person and yet aunt loves you more than me. Just because of you my whole life is ruined. You are responsible for every failure I faced in my life. You are not my sibling, you are my criminal. And I wish you die because I cannot tolerate your existence. Gloria started crying and asked him, What have I done to your life? What's my fault? He didn't reply. After that day, Laurie lived in the same house with Aunt Lisa and Gloria, but didn't talk to any of them. Laurie doesn't even greet Aunt Lisa at festivals, and when Gloria wishes him, he will just ignore her. He gave up on his job, got addicted to smoking, and being friends with bad people. Gloria blames herself for Laurie's condition, however she can't figure out what she did wrong. She repeatedly asks herself the same question. Am I your criminal now? We used to be siblings who love each other, how did we end up this way? Story 2 The Fake Savior Long time back, there lived a king called Harvey Joseph, he was young, handsome, kind and honest bachelor. His parents have died recently and he was the only heir. People in his kingdom were happy and loves him a lot. Young girls of the kingdom used to date dream about him. him. Nevertheless, he was harsh to criminals and used to make fearless decisions which is why there were a lot of traitors too. One day, the king went on hunting with the royal guards. After waiting for a long time, he saw a deer and start chasing it. He chased it for a while and lost in the forest. One of the traitors was following him, but he didn't realize it. He wandered around and tried to find a way to get out of the forest. The whole day passed, now it was the time when the blue sky turns into red, the evening time. He then saw a cave in between the mountains. As he was tired, he decided to have some rest in it. He went into the cave. It was cool and calm inside, so he fell asleep. While he was sleeping, the traitor enters the cave and hit him on his head, he got unconscious. Then he inserted needles all over the body of the king and left the cave by saying you deserve a miserable death for punishing my brother. The traitor saw the royal guards on his way back to town. He misleads them by saying that he saw the king going in the opposite direction of the cave. Next morning, while Dr. Analia was collecting the medicinal herbs from the forest, she saw the cave. She heard a voice coming from it. She went into it and was amazed to see the king in such condition. 
She was smart, talented, and beautiful young lady. She realized that it is dangerous for the king's life to delay the treatment. treatment. So, she quickly bought some herbs from the forest and started his treatment by removing the needles, followed by treating the wounds. A few hours later, the king gains consciousness, but couldn't open his eyes because his eyelids were wounded too. He asked Analia, Who are you? She said rest assured. You are in safe hands, and made him drink some water. King fell asleep because of pain. So, Analia went to find some food for him. An old man Albert saw her coming out of the cave. He sat under a tree and started writing something in his book. After a while, a young lady named Cambry who was on a forest tour sees the cave and enters it, to have her lunch. She was perplexed to see the king. The king slightly opened his eyes. Cambry was sitting in front of him. She offered food to the king. He misunderstood Cambry for Analia and considered Cambry as his savior. He said, I am grateful for what you did to me and I don't think I can ever repay you. At that very moment, royal guards arrived. King invited Cambry to be his guest at the palace. She agreed and they all went to the palace. When Analia arrived at the cave with some fruits, the king wasn't there. She got worried about him and came out to find him. The old Albert went to her and said, Oh young lady, don't worry about him, the royal guards took him back to the palace. She was glad that the king is safe, safe and will get better treatment at the palace. However, deep inside her heart, she was upset about not being able to see him again. A couple of months later, the king became healthy and announced that there will be a huge celebration at the palace. On this day, the king had decided to propose Cambry to marry him, because he is still thinking that Cambry has saved his life by treating him. She was very happy even though she knew that the king has misunderstood her for someone else. But she didn't say the truth because she wanted to be the queen. Many poets and musicians were invited to perform at the king's celebration. Just as a part of safety measures few of the doctors were invited too and Analia was one of them. At first, Analia didn't want to go there but then she thought even though I can't have him, I just want to see him for one last time. Now it's the day of celebration. All the guests, musicians, poets, and servants gathered in the giant hall of the palace. They all were waiting for the king to arrive. The king enters the hall along with Cambry, wearing the royal mantle. They sat next to each other. All the eyes were on them. Analia was envious of Cambry. The celebration has begun with the amazing art of a famous musician. Everyone was enjoying the music. Suddenly, a chandelier fell on the king. His left hand got injured by the glass of the chandelier. Everyone got tensed, all the guards surrounded the king to protect him. Analia came running towards the king, took his mantle off, and started treating him. The king asked, asked her who are you? She replied, don't worry. You are in safe hands. The chief guard tells the king that she is Analia, a doctor. The whole time of his treatment, the king was looking at her without saying a single word. He was curious about Analia due to her voice and the reply that she gave him. Her words don't worry. You are in safe hands, are the same words of the girl who treated him in the cave. He asks Cambry who was sitting next to him, why don't you treat my wounds? After all, in the cave, you gave me an amazing treatment even without the proper tools and medicines. Cambry replied yes I was about to do it but this young lady is good too. The king was getting second thoughts about Cambry being his savior. At the moment when the guards were taking the king to his bedchamber, an old man shouted I have something important to tell you, his majesty. It is the truth that you must know. The king ordered the guards to get that old man into his room. The king ordered everyone to leave his room except the old man. That old man was Albert, the man from the forest who saw everything and the one who knew that Analia was the real savior. The king asked him who are you? And what is the truth that you want to tell me? Albert replied your majesty. 
I am a poet and I usually go to calm places to write poems. I once went to the forest to write a poem but couldn't able to think of any topic. But suddenly I saw an incident there, so I wrote about it. If you allow me, may I recite that poem for you? The king got furious and said, I asked you about the truth and you want to recite a poem. If you are kidding right now, then get ready for punishment. Albert knelt on the floor and requested the king to listen to him till the end. King said, you have ten minutes, wrap it up as soon as possible. Albert thanked him and started reciting the poem. Savior, Savior. Oh, my Savior. Can you come to find me again? Save me from a fake Savior. Can you come to treat me again? Save me from a fake Savior. Savior, Savior, Savior. Oh, my Savior. I am sorry, I didn't recognize you. I am sorry, I didn't try to find you. Every time I get hurt. You are the one who treats me. You are the one who cares for me. Savior, Savior. Oh, my Savior. Can you please come back to me again? The king shouted, stop beating around the bush and tell me what exactly you are trying to say. Albert told him everything that happened in the forest. He also told him that the girl from the forest is the same girl who has treated his wounds today. The king called the guards and asked them where is the girl who treated him today. They informed the king that she has already left the palace. He got upset and orders them to find her by hook or by crook. He then called Cambry and asked her what was the first question I have asked you in the cave and what was your reply. Cambry understood that she got caught. She bowed in front of the king and asked for his forgiveness. The king replied, Pray to God that I get her back, if not, then I don't know what kind of punishment I will give you for deceiving me. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have left the cave without seeing her. Cambry knelt and begged for his forgiveness. As the king was kind-hearted, he forgave her and warned her that if she ever appears in front of him, she will be dead. Many days have passed, and the guards couldn't find Analia. No one knows where she has gone. The king got quite upset. One day, a poor old man came to the king and told him that the royal officials, officials are making people of slum areas, leave their houses and farming lands. The king asked his officials about it. They all said that the poor man is lying. So, one night the king decided to visit all the slum areas and inspect the issue. He disguised himself by wearing a blanket scarf and left for the surveillance. He took some food and gold coins along with him. He saw a lot of homeless people sleeping in the middle of the road along with the children. When the king asked the reason for there, they said the same thing. They have been chased out of their houses and their farmlands have been snatched. A lot of people got sick due to malnutrition. A young lady was taking care of them. When the king went close to her, he got amazed to see that it was Analia. She couldn't recognize him, as his face was covered. She asked him who are you and what are you doing here? He said, I live in the neighboring town and came here to find something. She asked, what are you searching for? He replied, I will tell you later. I have some food and I can share it with you all. The king gave them the food and money that he took along with him and came back to the palace. The next morning, he dismissed all those officials and appointed new ones. He ordered the officials, the officials to return the houses and farming lands that have been snatched from the people. He also started the rule of food supply for poor people. At night, he again disguises himself and went to that slum area. People were happy that they all got their homes and farms back. They were celebrating it, having meals and drinks sitting around the fire. The king was glad to see them happy. Now his eyes were looking for Analia. Suddenly, someone from behind pulls out his blanket. He was stunned and a moment later he turned back slowly. It was Analia. She knelt and apologized for her behavior and said your majesty. You looked suspicious, so I thought you might be one of those former officials. I didn't know that it was you. I sincerely apologize for my behavior. 
The king smiled and asked her to get up. He then said, as an apology, you have to marry me. Can you do that? Looking at the ground, Analia started blushing. The king asked her, are you rejecting me? She instantly looked into his eyes and said yes. I will marry you. They both got married and lived happily ever after. Story 3 Her Nightmares A young lady Anastasia screams and wakes up from a nightmare. She is frightened and wants someone to be there to calm her down. Her mom sleeps in the next room, but she couldn't go to her. She went to the kitchen instead, made herself a coffee, and came back to the room. She started working on her incomplete presentation. She was busy with her work and didn't realize that it is already dawn time. The alarm rang and she rushed towards the window and sat there looking at the sky. She loves to watch the dawn, the scene where light takes over the darkness. She then got ready and left for work. Anastasia works in a multinational company. She is competent, cheerful, kind, and has a strong mindset but the issue is neither in her personal nor professional life, she doesn't trust anybody. Even at the workplace when someone tells her that they will do her, her work, she smiles and says, sure. I trust you. However, she always keeps a backup plan so that if they betray her, she will have her work done on time. One day, when she was playing the truth or dare game with her colleagues at a party, they asked her you are in the middle of your twenties, yet you are single. Why? Do you want us to find someone for you? She replied I cannot trust anybody. They asked why, she said one question is over, and left the party. Her colleagues got mad at her rude behavior. So, one of her colleagues, Daniel made an excuse on her behalf. He said since she was working hard lately, she might be exhausted and wanted to sleep early today. We are her colleagues, we should understand her and also, she is the one who helps us with our projects every time we get stuck. Daniel was not only her colleague, but he used to be her classmate as well. However, in the office, no one knows about it because she doesn't talk to any man. One day, when Anastasia was giving a presentation in the meeting hall, her elder brother appears out of nowhere and grab Anastasia's throat and tell her to die. She wasn't trying to defend or escape from it. She was just staring at him with her teary eyes. The security guards came and took him away. Everyone in the hall was amazed to see what just happened. While everyone was asking her who that person was? And why did he do that, Daniel stopped everyone and asked her, Are you okay? Did you got hurt? He gave her a bottle of water. She took it and left the hall. She went to the rooftop, sat there, and cried a lot while holding the water bottle. Meanwhile, Daniel was standing on the stairs and listening to her crying out loud. He couldn't hold it anymore and went on the roof to stop her crying. Seeing Daniel, she stopped crying and asked, What are you doing here? He replied, I came to tell you that the manager is looking for you. She dr drank the water and said, Don't tell anyone that I was crying. He replied, When did you cry? I didn't see it. After saying that Daniel left. She put herself together and went to the manager's cabin. The manager said, I was looking for you, have a seat. She thanked him and sit down. He asked him, what was that? Who was he and why did he want you to die? This is your workplace not home. I agree that you are competent, but if such a thing happens again then you have to resign. She replied exactly this is the company campus, not my home. What security guards out there are doing? How can they allow any random person to enter the campus? Why the company is paying them if they cannot ensure the security of the company's employees? The manager said, this time I will handle the issue, but if it happens again then I have to inform the superiors, and I don't know how will they react. Be careful. You may leave now. Daniel was sitting in the cafeteria, thinking about his college life. He had a crush on Anastasia since college time because she was different from others and also, she was beautiful. 
she was confident, strong, and used to do the stuff by herself. She doesn't like to take help from anyone. None of the boys got the courage to talk to her because she was aggressive and arrogant to every guy. Her circle of friends has only girls. Daniel wants to talk to her but didn't have the guts, he only used to steal the glances at her. His friends used to ship him with her. Both of them had the same route to go home. Daniel has a sports bike whereas Anastasia used to go home on foot. She was poor, yet she doesn't, she doesn't allow anyone to let her down. Daniel has many reasons to love her. He wishes to know her dark secret and make her get out of that darkness. Anastasia came to the cafeteria counter and ordered a coffee. Listening to her voice, Daniel turned back to look at her. She was already looking at Daniel. He suddenly turned to the front and asked himself, did I do something wrong? Why was she looking at me? When he turned back again, she wasn't there. He thought he might be hallucinating. The next day, it was Daniel's presentation. Before his presentation, his colleague John asked him to get some older files from the storage room. John came to the meeting room and gave the presentation. When he ends it, Daniel came in and gave the files to John. He thanked him and took his seat. The manager scolded Daniel for being late and asked him to start his presentation. When Daniel opened his presentation, the manager asked him, Why are you opening John's presentation? Where is yours? Daniel replied, Sir, it's my presentation. I have prepared it on my own. There might be some misunderstanding. John stood up and said, Enough Daniel, if you needed some help, you could have asked me. But you tried to steal my presentation. Unbelievable. The manager got furious and said, So this is the reason why you were late, huh? Daniel replied, Sir please let me explain. John said, After doing such a nasty thing, you still have something to say? Anastasia stood up and went to towards the projector. Connected it to her mobile phone and said, Don't waste your energy on him John, I will show everyone how nasty he is. She played a video on the projector in which John was talking to his girlfriend Elena, another colleague. He asked her on a date and she denied it by saying, You have not even started making your presentation for tomorrow, how can you think about going out? He replied, Don't worry babe, I have already made a plan. Elena said, Plan? What kind of plan? Don't you dare to think of hurting someone? John replied, I am just copying Daniel's presentation and showing it to the manager before he does. I won't let him get hurt. Our manager always favors me. I will ask him to give Daniel a second chance and of course, he will make another presentation. We both will be safe in the end. Now shall we go out? The video ends. John got embarrassed in front of everyone and told Anastasia that person from yesterday serves you better. The manager threw the files on the desk and said, Shut your mouth John. And come to my cabin. Everyone left the meeting room except Daniel and Anastasia. While she was disconnecting her mobile phone from the projector, he thanked her. She said, If I can turn his world upside down, I can do the same to you as well, so you better stay away from me. She left after say saying those words. Daniel smiled and was very happy inside not because everyone got to know the truth. He was happy because Anastasia took his side. An intern Arabella has joined the company. She worked under the guidance of Daniel. She was a chatterbox. On her first day itself, she told Daniel that she is Anastasia's cousin and she knows the fact that Anastasia and Daniel used to be classmates. Daniel asks her to focus on the work. On her first day, Arabella gave Anastasia a treat in the cafeteria. When Arabella went to get the food from the counter, Anastasia fell asleep. Arabella didn't wake her up, because she knows that she barely gets to sleep at night due to her nightmares. After ten minutes, she promptly got up and hugged Arabella. She calmed her down and asked her to take deep breaths. The next day at work, Daniel asked Arabella, 
What happened to Anastasia at the cafeteria yesterday? She asked, do you love her? He said, this is not the answer to my question. She said, I know but, to know the answer, you have to answer my question first. He told her to continue the work and complete it before the evening, and left. A few days later, he saw Anastasia going to the rooftop. He stood on the stairs and listened to her crying. He went to Arabella and said, Yes, I do love her and I want to know every single thing about her. I can't see her crying all the time. She said, If you move even a single step forward, then there is no way you can go back. He replied, I always wanted to take a step forward but, didn't know how? Can you help me out, little sister? She smiled and said, Of course son-in-law. I don't want to see her alone, but before that, you need to know about her. Daniel asked her, you know a person came into the meeting room the other day and tried to kill her, do you know who was that person? She replied, that was her elder brother. Daniel got stunned and said, what are you saying? Why would a brother want to kill his sister? Was that her stepbrother? Arabella replied, no, they are biological siblings. And don't exaggerate yourself, because it was just a trailer. He asked her to tell the whole story. She started telling him about her. When Anastasia was in the womb of her mother, her dad expected it to be a boy. When she was born, her dad doesn't want her as she was a girl. According to him, girls are a burden. So, he tried killing her. Her mom saved and raised her. When Anastasia has grown into a teenager, her dad tells her mom that she did a good thing raising a girl into a young lady. Now let's sell her. He insisted her mom on selling her so that they can get rid of poverty and live a good life. Her mom gets a divorce from him as she doesn't want to sell her. Anastasia started living with her mother and her elder brother. As Anastasia was still young, her mother and brother used to earn their livelihood. Since then, her brother thought that their father was right about it. We can make a better living if we could sell her or if she didn't want us to do that, she should have died at least so that we don't have the burden of raising her. She doesn't do any work and yet mom loves her more than I. When her mom wasn't there at home, his brother abused and tried to kill Anastasia. She escaped somehow, somehow, and when her mom got to know about it, she told him to either leave the house or stop abusing her. He left the house and went to his dad's place. Anastasia started living with her mom alone. Her mom loves her a lot. Nevertheless, she doesn't eat or sleep with her. She doesn't even comfort her when she gets nightmares. Because she wants her to become strong and get rid of the fear on her own. She wants her to be independent and also be able to survive in this cruel world. Therefore, since childhood, she was a self-contained girl. As she was a scholarship student, she had no choice but to get good grades. After completing her studies, she needs to find a job as soon as possible due to her financial conditions. She never gets to enjoy her life. She just lives it. She gets nightmares about her brother and father trying to kill her. Recently, she wants to learn something. Do you know what it is? Daniel asked, what? She replied, martial arts. He said, nice thought. But why does her brother still don't leave her alone? She said, because he thinks that she is responsible for their broken family. He considers her a curse to their family. He won't actually kill her, he just loves torturing her. And my stupid cousin, tolerate it instead of filing a complaint about him because she cannot do anything bad to her brother. Arabella asked, any more questions? Daniel said no and thanked her for helping him to know Anastasia's past. The next day Daniel asked Anastasia to come on the rooftop. She denied but Arabella insisted on going. She went there and said, what is it? Spit it out. I have a lot of things to do. Daniel said, Anastasia, don't get mad about what I am going to tell you now. I like you since college time and I sincerely love you. Anastasia said, let me tell you this, 
I am not interested in those stupid girlfriend-boyfriend relationships. He said, I am not asking you to be my, my girlfriend. I want you to be my wife. Will you marry me? She said, marriage? Do you even know anything about me? He said, everything. I know everything about you. And when I got to know about your past, I started loving you more. She replied, then don't you know that I hate men? But why? Not all men are the same, he said. With a quavering voice she said, there are certain things that even if we knew it, we don't want to believe it. I know, not all men are the same but, I don't want to believe it. He asked her not to cry and said, okay, don't believe me. Just believe in yourself, and ask yourself whether I deserve a chance or not. Take your time. I will be waiting for your answer. After saying that he left. A few days later Anastasia went to Daniel's cabin. Arabella and Daniel were making the project plan. She said, when I thought about your proposal, I have realized that no matter where I go, you always follow me, you clean up my mess behind my back, and no matter what you always believe in me. Therefore, I have decided to marry you. Daniel smiled and said, okay then. Let's get married and learn the martial arts together. Anastasia furiously looked at Arabella and said, you have even told him about martial arts. Seriously? Arabella replied, is this how you thank people? Anyways. Consider it as your wedding gift. She left after saying that. One month later, Daniel and Anastasia got married and lived happily. Days have passed. She no more gets the nightmares. One time, Anastasia woke up at dawn time and went to the balcony to look at the sky. Daniel came to her and asked, what are you looking at? She replied, I always used to look at the sky when the light takes over the darkness. And wished that someday, a light will enter my life and remove all the darkness, darkness. Finally, my wish came true. You are the light that I was wishing and waiting for. Story 4 Love versus Friendship Once upon a time, there was a pond in the middle of the forest. There lived a couple of alligators, Joey and Lily. Lily was mean and cruel, whereas Joey was innocent and loves Lily a lot. Joey has a best friend called Cuckoo, a monkey. Joey loves to eat fruits. So, every day Cuckoo used to bring different fruits for him. And often, Joey gives Cuckoo a pond ride, by making Cuckoo sit on his back. They were so close to each other. Lily doesn't like their friendship. So, one day she made a plan to destroy it. She started to act sick. She wasn't eating anything at all and was pretending like she will be dead at any moment. A few days passed and she started getting weak. Joey was worried about her, but he doesn't know what to do. So, he asked her, what can I do for you to get rid of the sickness? I cannot see you like this. Lily got happy inside, because it seems like her plan was working out. In a very low voice, she said, no, you cannot do that. Joey said, I can do anything for you. Just tell me what is it? Lily said, to become healthy, I must eat the liver of a young monkey. In the whole forest, there is only one such monkey, and that is Cuckoo. If you want me to live, then you must get his liver, else I will be dead soon. It's time to choose between your best friend and your love. After hearing that, Joey was startled and upset too. He was looking for a solution and couldn't sleep the whole night. The next morning, he went to see Cuckoo and after a while, he came back with a liver and put it in front of Lily. She instantly got happy and ate it with joy. She started dancing and praised him. After seeing her reaction, Joey asked, Are you feeling better? She replied, Yes, of course. I am absolutely fine, because you got me all I need. At that very moment, Cuckoo walks in and said, Hi there. Good to see you dancing. Lily was surprised and got furious. She said, Was that someone else's liver? Joey. How dare you lie to me? Joey said, 
Looks like that liver worked as a perfect medicine. I am so happy for you. Lily said, what rubbish. I have never been sick. It was all my plan to kick that monkey out of your life. Joey said, yeah. I guessed it babe. However, thanks to Cuckoo, who gave me this amazing idea to confirm it. Unbelievable, just because you don't like him, you want me to kill him? I can never be with a cruel person like you and also, I don't love you anymore. After saying that Joey left Lily forever. Thanks for listening. Share your thoughts in the comments section. Hit the like and subscribe button for more.